Hey. Hello. How's it going? I'm sure we've had tons of awesome like Session. conversations yeah. in Discord and um, even questions from the from other sessions and all that good stuff. So yeah. excited for another one. <laughs> very, very fun. Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to talk about long-term account planning and account management, which includes um, working through um, the future of your domain name or domain of one's own. Sorry, domain name. Wow. Um, domain of one's mm -hmm. own and into um, your account cleanup processes and how to make it sustainable for your school. Yeah. As well. So we've got all that good stuff going on. Yeah. So just thinking through questions for management, like Meredith said, you really want to make sure that this is sustainable. You don't want to end up accidentally building in tons of work for yourself. Um, you don't, and making sure that your project can scale in a way that's manageable and reach a sort of nice resting point. So thinking about how you want to scale, how many long-term users do you want to maintain? Um, and, and that's not something you necessarily have to decide up front. Again, you can sort of find that nice resting point and say, all right, we're going to stick with this. But also thinking about what policies you'd like to set. So for example, saying the default account has one gigabyte of storage, that's the maximum quota. And then we do offer a five gigabyte quota for people who's like faculty who have a particularly important project or something. But once it goes past that quota, once you start needing 10 gigabytes or something like that, in order to make sure resources are distributed fairly, we need to talk about other options for managing those sorts of things. And thinking through your support offerings. So what applications are people going to use regularly? You don't want to dedicate yourself to, or you don't want to commit yourself to saying, yeah, I can support everything in Installatron. That's going to be easy. No problem. Because you can't, or at the very least, you really don't want to. And you'll quickly find yourself like, supporting like a chatbot software or something like that, that you have no idea what it is. So yeah. definitely understanding which applications for projects that folks are going to use um, on that side. Yeah. So setting your policies up front and maybe you revisit them down the road if they're not working, but having something in place that you can reference and you can say, no, it's, it's in the rules. We wrote it down. You can read them here. There's always just a good, outlet to have, I find. Um, yeah. So thinking about planning, we talked about that sort of natural cycle, figuring out sort of where you want to rest, what the sweet spot is. Um, we can, sorry, just a second. Yeah. Um, basically, there are a couple of different ways to think through what decommissioning is. Decommissioning is the regular sort of cleanup of your server to look at accounts and say, you have lived on this server for long enough because we want to stay at a nice balance of account numbers. We want to make sure that the server is serving people as we want it to. It's maybe time for this account to be migrated off or to be deleted if it's no longer being used or something like that. Um, and thinking through that cycle, it'll probably be based on your use cases. So for portfolios, people will probably want to keep those as long as they're at the institution. But for coursework, coursework happens on a much shorter and much more cyclical basis. So maybe you're taking a look at that every year or something like that, um, every semester. For an academic project, that may want to need to live on even past when a person departs the institution because they hand it off to somebody else, something like that. Um, so in general, looking at your use cases and then thinking through, it's probably better to plan for a longer term use case than it is for a shorter term use case, just to make sure that people aren't accidentally getting caught up in that net and to make sure that you're not doing more work than you need to. Um, and as you'll figure it out 
again, thinking through those policies, what makes sense for you, and then testing it out and saying, all right, here's how we're going to make adjustments. Um, on those policies, you get to set them. You get to, as I said, tailor them to your specific project, to your use cases. And there are a couple of common policies. Generally, some schools say, all right, you can have account access up to one year after you leave the institution. And we also offer you the option to migrate elsewhere, to pick up your account and move it to any other hosting company that uses cPanel. And cPanel is industry standard, so that's a lot of them. Reclaim is one such company. Uh, <laughs> move to Reclaim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have no bias here. Totally, totally objective. Um, Another option that we've seen is you keep it for up to one year or, you know, period of your choice after signing up, which would be appropriate for those coursework based use cases or for a sandbox space where you say, hey, you have one year from the time of sign up. And after that point, uh, we're going to clear you off. Um, you have one year to do what you want, and then you can pick up and go, as with the previous example, if you like what you've done and you wanna keep it, but you can't stay. Uh, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, essentially. <laughs> um, or you might align it with single sign-on, and this would sort of dovetail with the account access thing. If your institution has a policy of your single sign-on access expires six months, eight months, a year after you leave the institution, then because single sign-on is used in order to access your domain of one's own account, a user who no longer has single sign-on options won't be able to get in. Um, so that's also a good touchstone for if you're saying, all right, you get to keep it for X amount of time after you leave, well, if people can't sign in six months after they leave, then that's a pretty good place to start determining your timeline for how long you would keep an account for them. Absolutely. We've seen a lot of schools work with the SSO option um, for deprovisioning accounts. Um, a lot of times the, the timeline is long enough for, for folks to communicate to the users to let mm -hmm. them know what's going on. And um, the students have time to prepare their account to move to another another service to maintain their, their um, domain and identity from there, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Meredith, did you want to talk through this policy? Yeah, of course. Um, so within the in indefinitely policy, this um, means you're not maintaining the or removing accounts after a certain amount of time. You're just kind of keeping them in place on the server based on the, the options um, there. But you can... Um, you can see an infinite growth happen pretty quickly um, where the um, as the project main or continues on, it grows larger and larger, more media is embedded in the in the site um, and more visitors coming to the to the the site itself. So a lot of times this um, indefinite um, policy isn't recommended because you can see quickly that um, account management can be a bear and you can see impact to other accounts on the larger, larger accounts. Um, and we're talking, we're getting up into the gigabytes worth of space. So kind of setting that package limit also helps with the indefinite option um, because that way you can kind of track um, how large an account grows and put a stop to it if needed um, on that side. Um, it is good to, to maintain any like longer term projects if needed um, as well. Yeah. I would also say that just thinking back to that idea of what applications you're willing to support, are you continuing to offer support for these accounts indefinitely? And how does that scale if you're potentially going to have infinite accounts on your servers? Don't recommend that. What kind of strain is that going to put on you when you try and just support users with those accounts? Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. For sure. All right. So um, in addition to the indefinite policy, there's what's called the unused policy. 
and this is based on um, information gathering that you create that you add um, through um, either logins or disk usage on that side. So the WordPress portal has a last login plugin that we set up that tracks based on the sign in to the WordPress portal itself. Um, it also is generated in we have a, a script um, that generates a CSV file um, with this um, option. It tracks based on your SSO sign in as well. So you can see when a user last logged in. So if they signed up maybe in January of this year and you're tracking over the summer, but they haven't logged in since January, it's probably a good um, telltale that the, the account isn't necessarily used yeah. on that side. You can also look at the disk space. So account, um, like if account has megabytes worth of data on it, it's more more than likely just a blank account that um, you can you can remove. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the last login script, in addition to that sort of last time they logged in, does include some data on how large an account is. So it's particularly useful for being able to filter through that data. And if you have multiple criteria that you want to apply, uh, that helps as well. Absolutely. Awesome. So now that you've set all of your policies, um, now when do you check them to make sure that your accounts are tracked to remove from the server? Um, if you're working with the graduation or departure um, workflow, you can either do this once or twice a year based on the graduation graduation schedule during slower times of the year. So throughout the summer or throughout the winter break. Um, that's a good a good point. Um, one year after creation, um, you can say, "Hey, we're going to remove any account in July that was that is close to a year old." Um, you can also use the account creation dates in WHMCS as a good tell, um, and you can even make that like a monthly sort of workflow um, if you'd like, um, or quarterly. Quarterly is more recommended, um, so you're not <laughs> making too much work for yourself. Mm -hmm. on that side. So maybe quarterly. Um, the unused option is a little bit more consistent um, or needs a little bit more attention in, in consistency where you check, where you set times to check in. So again, that maybe once or twice a year, quarterly, whatever you feel works best based on the account numbers you have. Um, definitely recommend setting a specific schedule for the unused option for sure. Absolutely. Um, cool. And with this, um, the, this workflow, you can kind of get a sense of how how accounts kind of end up, like what size the accounts end up being and that sort of thing. So typically, like is a WordPress site hovering around two gigabytes, three gigabytes, um, and then occasionally you'll find that you have a larger account that could be a larger project, long-standing project and that sort of thing. Um, some like if you find that you're, there are accounts that are becoming increasingly large, you can um, track that through maybe like support requests or any of your disk usage checks. Um, good telltale sign is that if the bandwidth usage increases, that means a lot more visitors are going to the site. Mm -hmm. um, the best recommendation there is to offer migrating to another service um, through reclaimed shared hosting or a virtual server, all that good stuff. Um, and even optimizing the website to help bring the size down to maintain the account. Um, you can offload images to another service like through Flickr or um, uh, Amazon Web Services, the S3 mm -hmm. storage, all that, all that stuff is good. Um, and a caching plugin is going to be your best friend at that point. Um, that will help um, speed things up for users when they're loading or visiting the site. Um, also help um, decrease the impact to other accounts on the server. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is part of what we were talking about at the beginning with regards to like the policies that you set of once you hit five gigabytes, if you really need to go larger, you can't, you need to, we'll, we'll figure out a place for your project to live, but it's not fair to the other users on the server, or you better have a really good reason, this better, this is a major academic project at the institution, something like that. And even then, Meredith, as you were saying, the bandwidth for a particular account, the more traffic that it's getting, the more that can impact the user experience, both for the particular account in question and for other users. Mm -hmm. So sometimes having it live in its own home means 
it can get more resources as it needs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, so when you shift into the, the um, removal process, you're going to start with your um, gathering um, of information um, <laughs> and you want to look for a list of your accounts that are on the server. Um, you can work with us to get this list um, or through the last login script. We do also have an Installatron application script that we can um, set up and run for you on request on that side. And then there's also a general CSV file that you can get from WHM. You can mm -hmm. export a list of accounts through um, the list accounts page on um, your root access. So let us know if you need any help on that side on getting a list. Um, we're, we're happy to, we'll, to help out there. And we're going to share resources on the last login script, um, general best practices and all that stuff as well. So it'll be really helpful. Yeah. Um, and once you have your list, um, we do have some recommendations on managing the managing this to um, pare down as much as possible based on what you want to remove. Um, we do have an automated script that is based out of a CSV file. So we want to make sure that we're saving that as a CSV. Also using the email address associated with the account, um, but making sure to note that if, you, if the account has multiple accounts or if that email address has multiple accounts associated with it, you want to make sure to note those because our script does not differentiate between multiple accounts. It wipes based on the email address. Yeah. The so, idea being if a user is leaving, then, well, they their email's going away. So that sort of thing. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So th that's important to, to make sure to flag if needed. Um, so that, that way, if like a longer um, research project is happening or a club account, like a, like a student club um, has an account on the server, that way it's maintained and no, they don't have to rebuild the site once the, the semester starts again. Yeah. From there. So once you have the list set up and you have it organized based on the email address and noted the accounts that you don't need um, or the the email address that has multiple accounts, um, send the CSV file our way. Um, at that point, you can set a timeline for how long you want to um, how long you want the process to go. We recommend suspending the account first and then terminate the account from the server after a couple of weeks, months, however long you want to maintain that. So typically we see sometimes two weeks, sometimes one month um, suspension and then we'll terminate. Um, this way, if for whatever reason there's an error in the script or the student comes back to the school or whatever policy you set um, and the user notices their account is suspended, they can reach back to you and let us know that the account is still active. That way we can save the account if needed. Yeah. Once the account is removed from the server, we keep backups for 30 days through Jet Backup. So within that window, we have time to, re to restore the account. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important to let us know what the timeline is that you'd like in regards to suspension and termination on that side. Then you'll also want to communicate to the users on the list um, using the mass email tool in WHMCS with client groups. is actually really handy and really helpful to... Um, knock it out right away versus yeah. sending an email individually to each user. Um, and let us know if you need help with any client groups or anything like that. We have scripts. Um, we, we do have scripts. have scripts. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, we can help you um, set up those and then the, the email tool will be your best very friend. Handy. We've used that a lot. Um, mm -hmm. In that email, we definitely recommend that you send them resources um, on what to do. Um, so that includes like moving to reclaim if you wanted to continue your domain name, um, what backup options you have if you want to just keep a copy of your account locally or you want to take it to another hosting company mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. So um, we have a guide on um, the language to use when you're writing this email to the, to the student. So it's really helpful um, to have a good base template if you need to on that side. Um, and we'll be able to share that at the end of the slides and then I believe again in chat probably. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and if you do have any other questions during um, this premiere um, as we're talking, definitely let us know in, in Discord we'll, that we can take a look for sure. Mm -hmm. um, keep the chat going. Um, 
once um, we have that list and you determine that time frame, the magical script comes in that our infrastructure team has created and we process that list um, through um, WHM. And then we set, a time, set our timelines internally so we can follow up and make sure that the, the list that you have is still correct within the ticket. And then we um, process from there. Um, if you find that the list is very small and you want to maybe take, on, take this on yourself, First of all, don't feel like you have to. We can definitely help you help you with all of this. Um, if you have like one or two accounts you want to remove from the server, um, we highly recommend that you use WHMCS for this. Yeah. Um, that is going to be what communicates to your WordPress portal and WHM. Um, so that way that the so that way when if the user ever signs in for whatever reason, they're prompted to the right spot um, mm -hmm. and or move to the right spot to. Um, restart their account or um, know to reach out to you for more help on that yeah. side. And um, leave the record of WHMCS in the account if needed. That will help us track down where it could have gone. Yeah. Um, but if you have any questions about the process of removing accounts on a one-off basis, um, definitely let us know too. Um, but mm -hmm. don't feel like you have to do this all on your own with our scripts. It's so easy. Yeah, for sure. Um, awesome. So I just have some, we just have some more information on resources, our general account cleanup um, category within our help center, how we do, how we gather data within the, um, the unused um, policy setup and um, <laughs> more migration information and the language used to send um, account notifications when we're re removing accounts. Um, yeah. This will all be posted in Discord so we can um, share the resources there um, for sure. Yeah. So I'm just thinking through, it looks like we have maybe a couple minutes. So I'm going to keep you here, Meredith. You're my prisoner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and just talk about those communication timelines um, in terms of what a shorter timeline versus a longer timeline timeline might look like. Um, so that suspending accounts for two weeks and then terminating, suspending them for a month and then terminating uh, is, I think, often what we see used with schools that are using that sort of unused method. The idea of, hey, if you're not using this, we'll send out an email that says, by the way, we're getting rid of this. And if you don't notice after a month, that's kind of on you. We, um, whereas for schools that are uh, deprovisioning with people graduating, they might start a couple months in advance communicating and saying, all right, if you're graduating in June, we're sending out an email in March to tell you if you're graduating in June and you want your account, you got to take it with you. And then we all know that people don't read their emails. And so you send another email in March, April. Um, and then you send another email at the start of May. Uh, I said graduating in June. Um, but you, you send maybe a couple of emails that says, here's how you take your account with you if you want to take it. Reminder that we will not keep it for you after this point. Here's what your timeline is. Um, and so depending on what policy you have in place, different communication styles and timelines may be more appropriate. It's Absolutely. Yeah. And it does take a couple cycles of account removal to kind of get that, that base down. Mm -hmm. um, so again, this is like all of these policies are definitely really customizable to what makes sense for your institution, your domain of one's own instance. Um, so we don't like to necessarily say this is the way to go. Um, yeah. And we've seen with other other schools, is, uh, the longer that they've been around, the the more um, they're, they've changed their policies too, the, to allow them to to adapt um, to any need that they need that they might have throughout the the um, termination process or removal process for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We never want to be prescriptive about this. Really, the whole point of this conversation is like there's so many options, <laughs> and even within those options, there's a lot of different ways to customize what you're doing and think through what makes sense for you. We don't have a set way of doing it because we, we know that everyone's got a different situation and a different management style that they want to go with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. 
So, so as we've got the couple minutes left, keep adding those questions into to Discord and we'll keep chatting um, through the process and any questions there. Um, but as sort of like a kind of a final, final thought process, um, having a little bit of policy up front will definitely help you keep track of accounts and make sure that the account management side of things is a little bit easier for you as you grow. Um, it helps you keep the project scalable and manageable within um, your, your group um, so you're not taking on too much at once. Mm -hmm. um, take advantage of reclaim automations. Um, we have our CSV scripts that help remove accounts from the server, mass mail tools, um, adding client groups. Um, we're here to help you go through the base of getting accounts removed. So as you're getting set up and all of that good stuff. And um, also putting out there, keep talking in Discord again. Um, we can always go through examples of um, different timelines, um, different policies that schools have set up. So let us know what you've got for your school and um, we can definitely highlight those as well. Yeah, and if you ever write in and say, I think it's time, but I don't know what to do, you can just send us a support ticket and we can talk through your options with you again and you know, just think through in your particular case, what sounds good, what sounds reasonable. We're happy to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, that was account management and cleanup. Um, and we'll keep chatting in Discord for sure. Yeah. See All you right. in Discord. See ya. Bye.